Kechi Abuba, a lecturer researcher, Department of Agriculture and Applied Economics, uh, Uni River State University, Port Harcourt, is joining me right now on the phone lines. Welcome again to the program, and uh, sorry for, you know, the network isn't friendly this morning. Exactly, you're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity, uh, Nancy. Yes. Uh, how, how is Port Harcourt this morning? Well, Port Harcourt, um it's a bit sunny, but um, quite friendly weather, mm. and the uh, clement, mm. um, clement type of weather, you know. Mm. No, no rain, um, but not very hot. Okay, because I know it's like it rains almost every day in Port Harcourt. <laughs> I don't know about the, <laughs> the other parts of River State, but thank you for joining yes, us. Um, let me get started with, how, how is the preparation for Easter going in Port Harcourt, around where you are? Uh, what's the buzz around Easter and perhaps celebrations around perhaps people, you think that people are going to be spending money uh, today and perhaps in the next few days as we uh, go home for the holidays? What do you think? Yes, um, down here, lots of um, immigrants are coming, uh, coming in uh, with respect to looking at the, uh, uh, the entrance of um, persons who have been away due, due to the COVID break, some that made preparations to come into the country last year could not come. So they, they are resorting to coming around um, the Easter period when the, uh, the, uh, the lockdown is over and, you know, activities are ongoing. Yeah, so a uh, lot of people are making preparations to travel and the the cost of essential commodities, especially food, is going high by day. And um, there's so much demand for, um, you know, of course, you should know that um, during such periods, there's always high prices of um, commodities. Yeah. Yes, especially as uh, the nation prepares for the Easter holiday. Even before the Easter holidays, food prices were skyrocketing. So I can imagine what the price of food will be right now. Do you think that the demand, okay, there is the demand there. Uh, okay, okay, let me put it this way. What do you think of the demand and the supply of food food this period? Yeah, um, you know, can I say that l last year, you know, I had even uh, projected uh, when I was invited for an interview, and I was telling them that 2021 will be will not be a very friendly year. It will be very difficult for the poor because you know um, um, at the moment the uh, because of the food supply chain disruption from the northern part of Nigeria, where the huge supplies come in from uh, you know during the dry season period, we are just um, getting. Uh, out of the dry season period when those um, when the northern part of Nigeria services the southern part of Nigeria and so because of the issue with the you know cattle uh, rearers and you know you know the issue that it's on ground and you know lots of those um, testing uh, items we are seeing and they are actually closed uh, the supply of those uh, commodities so. Um, there's, um, there's really um, um, shortage of food. There's, you know, insecurity. Food insecurity is heightening up. And um, the little that comes down south is, uh, you know, those prices are, you know, keep getting high. Now, um, now the farmers around here who cultivate um, crops and rear livestock, they are also, um, you know, trying to, you know, trying hard to make the infrastructural facilities available, like water, uh, which, uh, you know, irrigation. Uh, the um, the, the uh, river right here, we are in the river right area, um, having, you know, water. But what of the, 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 the having the, the other aspects of infrastructure available? What of after production, trying to uh, bring in food from the point of production to where they are needed? Now, talking about the road network, is poor, and uh, the farmers are also made to pay extra charges, like tickets and all that. So there's so much challenge 
with respect to food supply. And by the time food comes into the town, what I call, you will see that it will, you know, the cost will actually be high. And how can the masses, how can the poor masses be able to to navigate this this period? So, um, you know, that, you know, it now leads to high crime rates. You know, people are, um, you know, cutting into people's um, um, houses and looking for where to, you know, get their means of livelihood. So livelihood gets uh, more talent with respect to um, 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 the, the, um, the situation on ground. But if there is demand, there is high demand, actually, and the supply is not um, commensurate to the, uh, uh, you know, to the need on ground. Mm. So you see, that that's why I asked that question earlier, and I took it from that perspective. Uh, so from what you've said now, there is high demand, but the supply is not commensurate with the demand. Is that also adding to the skyrocketing food prices we're seeing? Or is it because of the worsening insecurity in the country? Yeah, the situation is doubly worsened, you know, given uh, the Nigerian households already have among the highest shares of consumer expenditures mm. on food in the world. And, uh, you know, like research has also told us that uh, food took up about 60% um, of consumer expenditure in Nigerian households. Yeah. So, and um, um, the latest data, which, you know, like sometimes we rely on um, data from CBN, sometimes we also rely on data from Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. But we, we've always tried to to, um, you know, um, compare it with World Bank data because that's more reliable. So annual food inflation, because I have to refer to that, it, it has surged to uh, like about 22% uh, around February time. And um, from, 20, uh, from that to uh, about 21% in January. So comparatively, so now in March, March is, you know, ending today and reaching its highest... Um, uh, reading since October of 2005, you can imagine. And the finance minister has already told us that the country plans to, you know, cut out in duty on on uh, tractors for farmers and also mass transit vehicles to cut transportation costs and also reduce food prices. So, um, yeah. So at the moment, we are actually encouraging uh, farmers down here to keep farming. Uh, the challenge is that the, 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 the attention being paid to our farmers, you know, is not really encouraging. So from what we are seeing, you know, we need to really, the government has to really look into this. The state government and even the federal government has to really come into the concerns of our farmers and then uh, look at the food supply chain and the players, the key players, those who are, um, are playing one role or the other to make sure that food comes, uh, you know, which is the common man. Okay, doctor, uh, just a quick one there. When you were talking, you did say that uh, the World Bank statistics are uh, re more reliable than the National Bureau of Statistics. Uh, why did you say so? Because I also do know that the National Bureau of Statistics have improved. I'm not their spokesperson, but of course you're seeing data come out almost every month from the National Bureau of Statistics. And I must also tell you that the World Bank also quotes statistics. They take some of their statistics from the National Bureau of Statistics. Yes, I am not actually ruling out the fact that um, these institutions that have you know, stored data are, are trying and making good efforts we use the statistics to run our research, uh, but you know, I'm like, I'm just telling you that um, most times, um, you know, we have always been um, advised, you know, by the NUC and the, you know the research because of the quality of research. We always, um, you know, gravitate towards um, the World Bank um, uh, statistical report. But I am happy now. From um, from uh, the uh, the recent um, attention and you know upgrade in the system with the N with the 
MBS and also with the CPN. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I just needed us uh, to, I needed you to talk about that a bit since you are a researcher too. Um, if we take a look at this year, because from your opening statement, you did say that your forecast for 2021 uh, is that 2021 will not be a friendly year. And it's turning out so for many, many, many majority of Nigerians. Do you think that 2021 will look like the 2016 recession that we had uh, in the sense that, like you mentioned earlier, uh, that people are on the street right now. We're seeing even a, uh, a rise in robbery, uh, in armed robbery and all of that. Also in kidnapping. I remember in 2016, if you're cooking, perhaps for those that are even in the rural areas and all of that, if they are cooking outside or at the backyard, some people experience that before they come back to the backyard, their foods have been taken off the fire. So do, do you see us getting back to that level, especially now that food prices are on the increase? And the government seems, it says it's doing a lot. The central bank also is doing a lot because if you see the portfolio of funds that the central bank is, is amassing into intervention funds, but we are not seeing commensurate benefits. What do you think? Um, thank you for that very important question. Well, can I say that um, Nigeria's history um, of poorly maintained road networks, mean logistics of transporting food across the country. It has remained inefficient. Well, that's by the way. You know the agriculture sector is a primary sector. And food, like I said, among the basic needs of the common man, food, shelter, and clothing, food still ranks high. There's a saying that um, a hungry man is an angry man. An angry man is a hungry man. You know, food is very essential, and we won't even go into that. But what are the implications? Because of we've not given uh, attention to agriculture. We've not, we are not uh, practicing agriculture as um, our culture, even when uh, those who are practicing it as a business are also practicing it as a business. But we need to come to the to the point when we are all when we should be encouraged the people of Nigeria, Africans, we should come back to agriculture as even the white those in Europe are practicing it. They have their home home gardens. How many people have home gardens? And this situation is worse enough. You know, like the deadly pastoral attack in Nigeria's middle death region. It has often, you know, which, uh, you know, in the middle belt is referred to as food basket. Anyway, the food basket of the nation. They have also been undermined. That is the potential of agriculture, our economy. Can you imagine that? That the food basket of the nation is no longer producing as it were. Servicing the other states there, despite, you know, the present hopes of, of Nigeria, becoming a country that is food sufficient by now. Can you imagine that the stark reality of our agricultural sector simply is not growing as it's, as it's supposed to? So in fact, can we say that the growth of our agricultural sector and crop production, as well as livestock, has declined? It has declined close to 50%. Okay, oh, okay, Doctor, uh, my apologies. Let me interject because we would have to round up in just a few yeah. seconds. And I want to ask you this uh, question. Since uh, you're a lecturer in the River State uh, University, I can imagine what you're teaching your students at this time regarding how we'll develop our agriculture. I spoke to a guest some time ago okay, during the COVID series that I had last month. And uh, we almost entered an argument here on the program where he said that the way we are practicing agriculture in terms of encouraging smallholder farmers will not take us anywhere. We've got to begin to do agriculture on a big time level, big scale, big companies, and, and you know, not pay so much attention to smallholder farmers. What do you think, especially around what you said, that how many families have gardens in their houses. I have a, a small garden in my house where I get vegetables, tomatoes, 
green and all of that. So what do you think? But how many people are like you in that regard? How many people, when you, you know, people like you are like one in a million. Or uh, maybe one in thousands, let me know you, million, because there are two persons who have, you know, that. But we, but we respect to your question. Um, sorry for cutting you short, but yeah, go ahead. I, I have to talk to you short at that because um, being, a, being a university lecturer, I'm not just a university lecturer here. I also am engaged in a lot of international networking volunteer organizations across, you know, across Africa. And um, that's what I, I choose to call brain re-engineering. Brain re-engineering is trying to change the face of agriculture before this young one. Most of them did not... Um, you know, they did not enter, initially apply to uh, study agriculture. Why? Oh. Because of perception. Okay. There's a perception problem in line with choosing agriculture as a profession. Now, that is even different. Even right now, most persons who studied engineering, um, uh, you know, law in the legal profession, and even medical doctors, just like yesterday I met, you know, um, uh, a medical doctor who is, very much interested in agriculture and not just her alone. Many medical doctors and engineering and okay. other professions, even in the oil and gas, they are coming back to agriculture. Why? Because they want. They have seen that agriculture is the future. Agriculture okay. has the, 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 Dr. Abuba, I have to interrupt you now at this time. Okay. I think that's the much you can take on today's edition of the program. Okay. Many thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity as well. Thank you. I've been speaking to Dr. Ikechi Abuba, who is a lecturer and researcher, Department of Agriculture and Applied Economics, River State University, Port Harcourt. That's the show today. Thank you all for joining us. Be the best you can be. Be the change you want to see. I am Nancy Naji. Bye now. Thank you for watching our video. Please hit the subscribe button below. Turn on post notification to follow all our updates.